The purpose of this video is to go over Chapter 5 in the Proposal Writing Book, Effective Grantmanship for Funding by Coley and Schreinberg. Chapter 5 is Logistics and the Basics of Writing a Proposal. There's a couple of things that are uh, really good in here. They get you thinking about just sort of in general, what are some things that you should consider before you write this proposal. So one of the things you should definitely think of is that it's really hard to get started with big grants. So start with a smaller grant or link to another organization that already is very successful with grant writing and, and receiving that. The other thing too is you have to have people with grant writing experience on the team. You really, really need to have someone who's obtained and managed grants or contracts in the past um, the other thing too is you really should have an experienced grant writer at least look over your work. The other thing too is this will cost money. This will definitely cost the organization money to work with a grant writer. Um, one of the things that you might be able to do is work out sort of commission based if they win a grant, you know, um, based on their work. Um, that that's sort of how they're paid, although that's unlikely. Usually they want to be paid up front anyways. But uh, the other thing is, even if you just want them to look over the grant and provide feedback, if not apply for the grant themselves or to be the lead on the project. Uh, one of the other things that you should definitely do is talk with what's called the program officer or the grant officer um, or whoever is working at the organization that's providing the grant. So if it's a foundation, call up and ask who manages the grants, who receives the grants, who's the grant contact. So you wanna to talk to those folks and have a conversation about it. Uh, that will almost be impossible if you're going to the federal government. It, you know, it is possible, but you might call them 20 times before they respond to you once, or you might have to keep calling them until you actually get them on the phone, uh, but it is very difficult to do that. Uh, you should also demonstrate support. Who is supportive of you applying for this grant? One of the other things that they talk about is um, as you're writing, if you're working with a collaborative or other groups of people, there's you know phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one is determine the need and establish goals. That is really important in general for grant writing. What are the needs of the goals of your organization and this grant, and how can we align those? The other thing too is, are you starting a new program or are you trying to collaborate or extend existing programs? It's easier to extend existing programs in terms of grant writing, but it might not be you know your baby. It might not be your heart, your mission. Um, but again, that's easier to do it that way. The other thing is they talk about writing style and format. Um, clearly, you should write in an extremely formal way. It is important to write formally, um, avoid sort of casual language. Please get your snottiest friend to read it, like whoever is really, really anal about grammar. Um, and writing and formality, get that person to write it. One of the things about this grant writing is you really wanna develop a team of people who have varying strengths and work to your strength. If you have somebody that's good with numbers, great, put them on the budget. If someone is a great writer and again, is really, really picky about grammar, put them on editing. Um, one of the other things they talk about in this chapter is using audio or visual media. I personally haven't seen grants that say you can submit a video with it. Uh, that might be more popular among foundations and less from the government. However, if they let you do a video, definitely do a video, but please get your coolest uh, staff member to do it. it. It needs to be someone who is really focused on technology, engaged in social media. Uh, it's a short video, it's interesting. You know, someone who does snap regularly, you know, that's helpful. That's the kind of person that you want to do it. Someone who's super entertaining. And then your measure of if it's a successful video or not is get a teenager to watch it. And if they watch the whole thing, it's a successful video. If they're bored after 30 seconds, you need to redo it. Um, because that's how your funder is going to feel. Um, they have a very short attention span. They absolutely do, do not want to watch long videos. Uh, so keep that in mind. So that is chapter five logistics and the basics of writing a proposal.